Okay, today I'm gonna just make a short video on how to make a oil restrictor valve. Uh, basically, pr I think I'm getting a little bit too much oil pressure. Um, I do have a uh, oil uh, restrictor brass fitting in there, but it doesn't seem to be doing the job. Um, so I just think I'm getting too much uh, pressure in there, and it's getting past the the actual piston rings in the turbine and I'm getting some blow by so basically this is what I got going on uh, making it's gonna be a valve right here where I can adjust it turn it um, everything's loose right now I'm just getting just getting a little feel of what I, which way I want to route it um, I got the line it's not kinked or anything it's just got a nice bend in it it's going in there uh, basically you can see right here I'm gonna have a oil pressure gauge it's actually uh, a water pressure gauge slash air gauge um, just picked one up on eBay for like five bucks got some quarter inch fittings um, I still I do still have the uh, oil restrictor in here it's right here uh, that was kind of uh, challenging finding pieces to adapt it to um, but pretty much here's what it's looking like just coming right off the Garrett turbocharger and then I'm just running it out the side and then into the oil line right here um, I'm going to take it all apart you can see the pieces I'm using this is just a quarter inch uh, valve right here ball valve so I can adjust the alright guys these are all quarter inch fittings right here just got a quarter inch uh, 90 degree angle quarter inch inlet to quarter inch outlet male and then a quarter inch ball valve just a quarter inch stem this is a quarter inch gauge quarter inch uh, T another straight and then this is a quarter inch to I believe I think it's a half inch three quarter no it's about probably half inch anyhow this is my oil restrictor but I had to adapt it so you guys will probably use a different type of oil restrictor. It'll probably be true quarter inch flare like this. So you have to get a different adapter. But um, yep, you can see basically right here, just my turbo line is going to come right down in through here, my oil line. Then it'll go right through here, show the pressure, you can adjust it right here, and then it'll send it into the turbo. So, all right, in a little bit, you're going to see how it all turns out. Okay, so here's what I got going on. So far, I just went ahead and put the gauge on, kind of rerouted, bent my uh, AC line a little bit, give it a little play in between the two. Um, just went ahead and fitted on all the pieces that I could get on right up front. Um, the gauge would be a little hard to see, but, you know, it is what it is. But, um, so, basically, I got everything I could get on here. And then I'm going to go ahead and run this, uh, the uh, valve. I'm going to put it on the side here, and then we're going to run the oil line in. Uh, but basically, I want to show you a quick tip, though. When you're putting any fittings on, uh, don't use plumber's tape. <laughs> this is a uh, motorized vehicle with hot oil, so, um, I mean, it'll work, but I always use some high-temp ATV. You can get uh, Permatex. It works pretty good. Um, never had any problems with it. Use it on all my exhausts, exhaust manifolds. Um, sometimes even on an intake manifold. Uh, I seal up any kind of coolant lines, oil lines, and stuff's great. So just use that stuff. Um, I'm going to show you what it looks like and I'll give you a running video of it here in a second. All right, I got one more tip for you on these ball valves right here. Um, they come a little loose, so when you're when you're turning this valve right here, it's loose, and with an engine, you're going to be rattling, getting a lot of vibration, and if this goes off, you lost all your oil pressure, and you're you're going to fry your turbo. So uh, I was looking at it, and I decided to sh show you what I did. Basically, you're going to take this. 10 millimeter nut off the top of the ball valve. And you're going to pull it off. 
and you're going to get yourself one of these adjustable wrenches. And if you look real closely, it has a flat end on each side. See it right here? And you're going to put the Allen wrench on there. Well, not the Allen wrench. Adjustable wrench. Okay, and you're going to get your 10 millimeter, and you're going to tighten it. Give it a good tight, not too tight. Just enough to get to snug, because there's a plastic garment grommet inside. Then you're going to go ahead and put this back on. You just want to make sure you get it going the right way. I want it this way, so... And then you just go ahead and tighten the nut down. Be careful don't strip the threads on that or you won't get this uh, 10 millimeter back back on. So, And that's that. Once you get it on there and tighten down and everything, it's nice and tight. I mean, it's it's pretty tight. So you won't get any vibration turning it back or anything like that. So just wanted to show you that quick tip. All right, so here's the finished product. Um, it's all put together. The gauge is installed. We routed the AC line, gave it a little bend, you know, just so it wouldn't interfere. Got the line hooked up all the way up to the oil line. Now, when you put this oil line on here, just double check, make sure you don't have any kinks, you know, because steel braided line can kink and stay kinked. So if it's just kinked just a little bit, you know, you're just going to get your pliers in there. You know, kind of just grab it. Just give it a little, little tiny little squeezes, you know, then feel it. And it, it feels all right. Just let, let it go. But make sure when you're tightening this line that you got a, a monkey wrench or a pair of vice grip pliers on here. And then uh, obviously either 17 or whatever size yours is on here. So you, because when you turn it, you're going to twist your line up pretty nasty, especially being curved like this. So, um,. About to give it a start now. All I'd have to do is adjust this valve back and forth, um, and it'll adjust the, the pressure gauge right here. So, well, let's give it a spin. All right, so I started the car up, and we don't have any leaks or anything right now. It's running real good. Um, you see here, uh, you make it out. It's running at no 55. It's a cold start out, so I'm gonna let it run a little bit. But I want to get that number down to like 15 or 20 at idle once the oil gets all warmed up. And if it's not at that, if it's still like 40, then it's running too rich or too much pressure. So, yeah, right now you can see it's, it's running pretty high. I don't want that much pressure going in there. So, let's get back with you. All right, so pretty much on rev, I was getting about 80 psi to the turbo and that's just way too much i think the garrett dual ball bearings i got a ar60 um 60 trim i think they only call for about 35 to 40 psi max max to the uh the the, sh the bearings the shaft and uh yeah i was getting over about 80 and, and that was only about four or five grand at 80 so start getting up to 8,000 RPMs, I could have been pushing almost 100 PSI to the turbo. Even with a uh, restrictor, I believe I had a, uh, a 35 thousandths uh, oil restrictor in the line. Still, I mean, you're going to be pushing it so hard, it's going to come out like a jet, and it'll fill up that oil return line pretty darn quick, and then you get some backup, too much pressure, and then you get blow-by. So, um, as of right now, I dropped it down to about 12 PSI at idle. Now, when you go ahead and adjust it at idle, it's not going to change any. You're not, you're not really changing the idle pressure. You're changing the overall pressure. So when you back it down and you don't see anything moving on the gauge, don't worry about it. You'll go a little bit and you'll see it turn off. Then go back the other way a little bit till you get about 10, 12 PSI, maybe 15. And then rev your engine up a little and make sure it doesn't go over 50 PSI. You know, I got mine going about 45, 40 PSI on, on max. That's all you really need for that turbine. I mean, you start getting like 100 PSI in there, you're going to get a lot of blow by. A ball bearing turbos don't take as much oil as a regular um, bearing turbo. The, they're floaters. Uh, if you get if you have the non-ball bearing turbos, of course they're going to take more oil because the actual bearings float on the oil, kind of like having... Uh, rod bearings and crank bearings they float the bearing never touches 
the actual crank or the in, inside of the turbine. So, but other than that, um, I got her down to about 40, 45 psi, about at about five, six thousand RPM. So, we'll see if I smoke. If I don't, then uh, pretty much that's that was the problem. Strange, but that was the problem.